Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're going through cubic graphs uh, so we can answer questions on exercise 4a. So, uh, hopefully you've seen cubic graphs before. Their rough shape um, looks something like this. It starts in the bottom left hand quadrant and uh, finishes in the top right hand quadrant. The equation of this graph will be very similar to a quadratic just with an x cubed term here. So with the quadratic looking like a U-shaped graph, why does this graph look like it does? Well, if we consider large values of x, say x is 10 for the moment, uh, we'll get 10 squared here, so that will give us 100 as our coordinate. But when we get uh, 10 substituted in as the x value here, we get 1,000. So on the x cubed graph, it's going to be increasing very, very quickly, much quicker than it did for the quadratic graph. But the key thing here is to consider when x is a negative value. Let's consider minus 10. With the quadratic graph, when we had minus 10 as our x value, squaring minus 10 gave us positive 100. So that's why it started up on the top left-hand side of our graph. However, when we substitute minus 10 into this uh, part of the x cubed function here, then that's going to give us minus 1,000. And if you think about it, minus 1,000 and positive 100, the minus 1,000 is always going to win. So that's why it's always going to start in the bottom left-hand quadrant for a cubic graph and finish up in the top right-hand quadrant for a cubic graph, unless the term that's in front of the x squared is a negative, a bit like it was for a minus x squared graph. We flip it upside down, so uh, flip it in the x-axis, and it starts in the top left, and it will finish in the top right, the bottom right. Okay, let's have a go then at sketching some cubic graphs then. So what we want to consider is their roots, and we also want to consider where it crosses the y-axis. So let's start off with this uh, x cubed function here. Now we've factorised it here but you could see that if you were to expand this uh, cubic um, factorization, then you would indeed get a cubic equation. Now what we need to consider here is when a times b times c equals zero effectively. So when either of these letters, uh, when, e when these letters times go to make a zero, one of these letters must equal zero. So what we need to consider is for the roots when the y value is equal to 0. So either x minus 2 is going to equal 0, x minus 1 is going to equal 0, or x plus 1 is going to equal 0, in which case we get these three solutions, just like we did with a quadratic, apart from we only had two then. So what we can then do is we can then plot these coordinates on a uh, diagram. Let's have a look now at where it crosses the y-axis. So it crosses the y-axis when the x-coordinate is 0, it hasn't moved left or right by anything, so we plug in 0 here, 0 here, 0 here, and indeed we're going to get 2. So that's how we find the y-axis intersection. So we have four coordinates here that's going to help us sketch our graph. <coughs> And remember, with the x cubed term, if we multiply out, we're going to see here that we clearly get a positive x cubed term. So we're going to be starting in the bottom left quadrant, finishing in the top right quadrant. So our graph is going to look something like this. It's going to come up through all of our roots and intersect as well when the x coordinate equals 0 on the y axis. OK. Let's have another go at this one here. Slightly different, but not too different. So the first thing we do, just as we did before, is consider the roots. So here, when each of the brackets equals 0, we find the corresponding x value. So in this example here, 2 needs to be x. For 2, take away 2 equals 0. 1 take away 1 will equal 0, so x is 1 here. And 1 add minus 1, so x is minus 1 here, will give us a 0. So, uh, We've got uh, three coordinates here now. Now we need to consider the y-axis intersection. So that's when x equals 0. So plugging in x equals 0, and we get y is minus 2. So on our graph, we've got four coordinates. Minus 1, 1, 2, and minus 2. Now let's look at what we'd get if we expand the x cubed term. We'd get a positive x, a negative x, and a positive x. 
So that would give us a minus x cubed term. So that gives us a clue that we're going to start this time in the reverse positions. Start up in the top left and finish in the bottom right. And we're going to come down and intersect our graphs like this. Okay, moving on to a slightly trickier one. Now, what happens if we get a repeated root like we do here? Um, just a reminder, what do we get when we draw the y equals x minus 1 squared graph? Well, what we get here is we get our root at 1, because that's when y equals 0. And it's just going to touch that point and then head back off in the uh, positive direction. So we're going to need to learn this, need to know this knowledge for, uh, for this type of graph here. So start off as we did before. So start by finding the roots. So that's when y equals 0. So our only two solutions here are going to be 1 and minus 1 for our two brackets here. Um, when x equals 0, we find the y-axis intersection, so that's going to give us a 1 as well. Now, for this solution here, what we're going to have is not it just going through the graph at the coordinate 1, but it's going to be a touching point at that coordinate of 1. So let's see this in action. What we're going to have is two coordinates that will intersect the x-axis one coordinate that will intersect the y-axis, but we've got to remember that for this coordinate, whoops, for this coordinate here, this is going to be the repeated root. That means it's just going to touch it and head back off in the other direction. Let's consider the x cubed term as well. This is going to be an x squared times an x cubed, so it's going to be a positive x cubed term. So that means we're going to start in the bottom left and finish in the top right. So joining a line through our curve, and it's going to look like this. So you can see here, this is the key point for this um, example here, that when you've got an x minus 1 squared, that's a clue as to that's going to be a repeated root. Hence, it's just going to touch the line and head back offwards. Uh, it's going to be a tangent to the line. The line is going to be a tangent to it. OK, let's consider this graph here. Now, you can see that this is still going to be an x cubed graph because the highest power when I expand my brackets is going to be x um, cubed. Um, so what we consider now is when we pass through the y-axis, we're going to get minus 2. We know we definitely have one root at minus 1. Can we factorise this so then we get two more roots, or can we not factorise this? So if we try and factorise it, um, I can't think of a way that we do this uh, by I, and we, we end up looking for um, using the quadratic formula, but in this case here, the discriminant is going to be less than zero. Hence, we're going to get a negative number inside that square root, and hence there are no roots for this part of the quadratic um, part of the cubic expression here. So that means we're only going to have one root. This part here is not going to contribute any more roots to our cubic polynomial. So we plot in our two graphs here. And remember, we're going to start in the bottom left and finish in the top right. Um, but we are going to need a little kink in our graph somewhere along the lines as well, because it is still a quadratic, a cubic graph. So the only way that we can start is by starting in the bottom left here, because if we consider the positive x cubed term, uh, it is going to be positive, so we're going to have to head up through the 1 and then upwards uh, that way. <clears throat> so the graph here is going to look something like this. Now how would you know where the kink in your graph is going to be? Um, there's, there's no easy way of finding that out, and I don't think you'll be marked down for not knowing where the kink is going to be in this graph here. We will see a, a way of working it out in um, differentiation, so we'll come to that later. Right, OK then, guys, it's your turn then. Have a go at these couple of questions here. Pause the video and try your best. Right, OK, well done for having a go at these questions here. So we're going to look for the coordinates that they intersect and whether it's going to be a positive or negative x cubed term. So when, x, when y is equal to 0, to find our roots, we're going to get 0 equals x bracket x minus 2 
x plus 1. So in this case here, our x values are going to be 0, 2, and minus 1. When x equals 0, to find the y-axis intersection, we're going to get y equals 0. Because this term here at the front is just going to be 0 times whatever we have here, so it's just going to be a 0. So to sketch this graph here, we're going to have a couple of points of intersection. One at 0, 0. That corresponds to effectively this uh, set of solutions here. Then we've got an intersection at 2, and we've got an intersection at minus 1. So what's the x cubed term going to be? Is it going to be positive or negative? Well, when I expand it, I'm going to get a positive x squared, x cubed term. So start in the bottom left, finish in the top right, and making sure that we intersect all of those points, we get a graph that looks like this. 2, 0, 0, and minus 1, 0. Okay, the second one here, a little bit more tricky. What we've got to remember here is when um, x is equal to minus 1 here, we're going to get a repeated root. So repeated root, that means it's just going to touch the x-axis uh, line and then it's going to zoom back off again. When uh, x equals 0 to find the y-axis intersection, we're going to get 1 squared is 1 uh, times by minus 1. So we're going to get minus 1. So let's plot our coordinates. We're going to get an x-coordinate of 1 and minus 1. Remember, this is the repeated root. And we're also going to get an intersection at minus 1. So what's the term on the x cubed? Is it going to be positive or negative? Well, we're going to have x uh, squared, so that's x squared, times by another x. So we're going to get a positive x cubed term. So start it in the bottom left, finish it in the top right. So it's going to have to go through here. Now the minus 1 solution was our repeated root. So because of this, what I'm going to have to do is touch the minus 1 coordinate, head down to the one, minus 1, and head back up through the 1 coordinate. OK, so have plenty of practice at this. Stop the videos. Have a go at exercise 4a. Uh, remember that watching these videos is only 10% of the learning, 90% of the learning is you having a go at the questions, persevering through the difficult ones, and asking your teacher for help on the ones you can't do. Thanks for watching.